Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Tuesday, January the 16th, 2024. Yesterday I talked about Martin Luther King and I talked about um, his assassination, which was on um, April the 4th, 1968. Now, just over a month before he was assassinated, um, the subject of this video was born, that is um, Gonzalo Lira. He was born on February the 29th. 1968 um, in Burbank, California, and he well, he's, he died on January the 11th, a few, uh, a few days ago, um, and uh, he and he is of uh, U.S. and Chilean, or was of U.S. and Chilean nationality. So, if you haven't heard of um, Gonzalo Lira, he is. He was quite a controversial figure. He was a sort of filmmaker, um, novelist, um, and sort of life coach. Uh, he went under the name of Coach Red Pill, I think. And uh, he, I think his coaching was um, re regarding sort of relationships and dating, um, coaching young men who were having difficulty finding the right relationship and perhaps had a lot of frustrations in that direction. Um, and, uh, yeah, he has got a lot of criticism, um, from a number of quarters. Um, but, uh, his final, um, fame to, ca fame to claim came with his association with, U with, uh, Ukraine. Um, I believe he, um, had a relationship uh, with a, an Ukrainian woman, had, uh, had at least, um, he had at least one child, um, and he he wanted to move to Ukraine, and he uh, he 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 set himself up in uh, Kharkov, or as the Ukrainians call it, Kharkiv, um, in eastern Ukraine, and he he came up uh, with very regular uh, videos on YouTube in English, uh, in which he was uh, highly critical of the Ukrainian regime. Uh, he tended to support the Russian perspective. Um, he was absolutely sure that uh, that Ukraine had a Nazi problem, and uh, he yeah he took the view that uh, by and large the Russians were uh, justified in what they were doing. Um, so that's a pretty dangerous position um, to put himself in, um, and. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, he had uh, he had a run in with the law, and uh, at one stage he was arrested and he was disappe he disappeared, and then he came back, and then finally he was he was um, yeah he really was he was arrested again. He was in prison. Uh, he got bail. Um, he took the view that. He was going back to prison, uh, that if he um, didn't get out of the country, he was going to die. <laughs> and so he, and so he uh, made a run for the, I believe, the Hungarian border, but he didn't make it. And he went back to prison and uh, he had medical issues. Um, I mean, you could see in his videos, he was pretty much chain smoking through all his videos. So it's, it's maybe he had lung issues. Um, but I think he ended up having double pneumonia in a Ukrainian prison, or maybe it was in a prison hospital. I mean, I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, on January the 11th, he died. A um, couple of things are interesting uh, about this. Um, firstly, um, why didn't the Ukrainians just throw him out of the country? I mean, that would be a logical thing to do. Why go through this legal process? He's quite a high-profile figure um, among some people. Um, why didn't they throw him out of the country? Um, why did they? Why were they so insistent on holding on to him? And also, why did the Americans? His, you know, he was an American citizen. He would should have been entitled to U.S. Cons consular assistance. But it appears that the um, U.S. government, the U.S. consular services, hardly lifted a finger for him. Um, and, 
he, by all accounts, was treated um, incredibly badly and he wasn't given proper medical attention. Um, and yes, on uh, on January the 11th, um, he died. And it has become quite high profile. Um, Elon Musk, for example, has... Um, uh, had raised his case. Indeed, Elon Musk was raising his case um, before he before he died. I mean, it is the whole thing is kind of interesting, you know. I'm, you know, as well as being tragic, um, uh, Gonzalo Lira, certainly controversial figure. Um, who knows if he was a nice person? You can see why he uh, why he has his critics. I mean, his videos were quite. Um, were quite in your face. Uh, they they were controversial. I didn't personally. I didn't particularly like his style. Um, but uh, that's not the point. Whatever you think of someone, uh, you expect them to be treated um, treated better than the way he was treated. And yet, yeah, why did the Americans not lift a finger for him? And uh, why was he? Um, why wasn't he just deported? I mean, that would make sense. Um, so it's interesting that, you know, Gonzalo Lira, he came from a Chilean family. Um, he, I believe, was an anti-communist. He had no truck with communism, as far as I know. And I have heard that he had said in the past and things supportive of um, the Pinochet dictatorship, um, which came into power in Chile in 1973. And the Pinochet dictatorship was really quite disgusting um the human rights abuses under um under pinochet were um were appalling uh you know I remember after that revolution the people were arrested they were held in a football stadium i think and then they were very often murdered uh executed they just died disappeared whatever and uh, yeah he said some supportive things about the pinochet regime um now yeah that is kind of ironic because um you know i'm kind of when i look at ukraine i look at when i look at the ukrainian government and what it does and how it behaves i'm sort of reminded a bit by some of the you know those regimes in south america in the 70s like uh, you know the the generals in um, Argentina, Pinochet in Chile, uh, the sort of the, the terroristic, fascistic um, governments of South America. You know, people like the Guardian newspaper would, of course, would have never supported um, the government in the nineteen, the Argentine government in the nineteen seventies, or the Chile, or Pinochet government in. Um, in the 1970s, but yet it's so strange. Yet the Guardian um, is happy to support uh, Ukraine, which is, as far as I, I can see, is cause on a par with Argentina and Chile in the 1970s, uh, but arguably a lot worse. Um, uh, and so, yeah, so perhaps, um, so perhaps uh, um, Gonzalo Lira shouldn't have been so quick to. Um, say something supportive about um, about the Pinochet government because he ended up in a place which was um, which was worse and he perhaps got to see how you know this was how people got treated in um, in, treated in Chile in the, in the 1970s um, but it is um, it is it is a tragedy um, and it is horrific to think that uh, the British government, the American government, are supporting Ukraine um, when it when it is quite clearly um, <laughs> quite clearly a dreadful regime, and we've just seen this um, with um, with Gonzalo, Gonzalo Lira's imprisonment and death. And I think it's the fact they didn't deport him. Um, I think that's really bad. It's like the Ukrainians were saying, "We don't care. It's okay for us. We want him. We want him to die." We're like that. We can get away with it. Um, possibly if he'd been in a similar situation in Chile and Argentina, he might have been deported. But no, Ukraine, Ukraine is really beyond the pale. Um, and I think the case of Gonzalo Lira does really support this. And, you know, whatever you think of Gonzalo Lira, you might hate his opinions. Um, but, you know, he was just he was just uh, just doing his vlog, talking on YouTube. And yeah, he and um 
that's what led to his that what le- that's what led to his imprisonment and uh, and death um and so i do want to talk about um gonzalo lira's horoscope i don't have his time of birth um uh, do have his day of death um, and I want to look at his death as well I'm not saying that I'm going to, going to be able to really say anything particularly amazing about Gonzalo, Gonzalo Lira's horoscope but I feel I should I should look at it and see what I can do with it um, but um, before I look at um, Gonzalo, Gonzalo Lira's horoscope um, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today which is Tuesday January the 16th 2024. So here it is. Uh, here's, the, here's the astrology for today. I'm not saying that the astrology for today is particularly spectacular. Um, so we can see that the moon is in Aries. You know, it's been in Pisces for some time. Now it's it's definitely in Aries. If you're interested, today the moon goes and in, went into Aries um, at four. 4.49 a.m. Tuesday morning, London time. That means um, if you're in the Americas, uh, it's pro- most of the Americas, it, it went into Aries um, last night. Um, if you're in uh, Sydney, Australia, uh, the moon will go into, Air- go into Aries, I believe, at around 5.49 p.m. Um, Monday night, so Monday evening. Um, so um, wherever you are over the day, the moon will move into Aries, and that does create a change. Um, you know, there's going to be um, more dynamism in the air. Um, there's going to be more action. Uh, there's going to be more of a spark. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, you're going to find that people are more interesting. Um, I think, um, and perhaps, uh, and perhaps less, less emotional. But that doesn't mean to say that uh, people can't say and do things which um, are a bit impulsive. Um, I say this because if you look at the moon in at, in Aries, it's making a square aspect to Mercury and Mars. So if you've got moon square Mercury, moon square Mars, this actually can be... Um, angry words so perhaps I spoke too soon about this sort of lack of emotion um, yes people can get annoyed about things and they can express this annoyance um, through through their words and their actions though mainly it's about you know the words um, you know with when you've got moon square mercury you know the, the moon and the mercury are t- both of them they are the communication planets um, mercury is about sort of intellectual communication um, the moon is more about emotional communication. So when you've got moon square Mercury, um, the the feelings come out quickly and they they need a vehicle to show themselves. And that vehicle is probably going to be words. So um, if you upset someone, you'll know about it quickly. Um, the moon in Aries, after all, is impulsive at the best of times. And when it's square... Um, when it's square Mercury and Mars, uh, people are going to express their anger, at least verbally, um, extremely quickly. And while all this is going on, um, the planet Venus is sesquiquadrate Jupiter. So um, there is um, there's Venus at twenty one forty nine Sagittarius noon um, New York time, and it is. 135 degrees from Jupiter. Um, this sesquiquadrate aspect is somewhat gushing. Um, I think we are going to want to relate. I think, you know, we will be challenged to relate. We might feel that we can't fully relate in the way we like. You know, we want to be close to people, but we're not quite sure how to get close to people. Um, so under those circumstances, you know, we might be tempted to, to behave in an inappropriate way. Um, perhaps we're going to try too hard to impress people. Um, we need to be particularly careful with money because when you've got Mercury and, Mercury and Jupiter together, you know, I know they're both fortunate aspects. Venus is the, great, is the lesser benefic, Jupiter is the 
greater benefic. You put them 135 degrees apart and um, um, they may take things too far, very benefic, but uh, you can have too much of a good thing. And that might be about, for example, spending too much money, trying to impress someone. So don't try too hard um, to impress people. On, the, on a positive note, um, with Venus, Sesame, Quadrate, Jupiter, um, you know, I think it is generous. And that needn't just be financially generous. It can be emotionally generous. We're, we're prepared to give people a chance. Um, we're prepared to think the best of people, um, at least in the short term. So um, I think that, you know, I think that that aspect um, could actually be quite fortunate. Um, if it's if it's handled um, correctly, and I should say that Venus and Jupiter are in mutual reception. You know, Venus is in the sign of Jupiter. Jupiter is a sign in the in the sign of Venus. So um, maybe that sesquic quadrate um, isn't um, isn't too bad. Now, one thing about that Venus, um, which could be a problem, is that if you look. Um, at Mars and Saturn, you can see that the Mars-Saturn midpoint um, is around 6 Aquarius. So that means that we've got Venus on the Mars-Saturn midpoint. Um, and that is a difficult one. Um, it's It could be that, uh, yes, we are trying to relate but Mars Saturn is about frustration. Um, it's about delay. Uh, it's about things going wrong. So attempts to relate could just not work out and cause a lot of frustration and grief. Um, so don't try too hard. And if you start to get close to someone and you start feeling a lot of negativity, um, then back off immediately. Um, because just some people are in a foul mood, uh, that they're in a very sort of negative mood. Who in particular? Well, Venus on the Mars-Saturn midpoint. Who is Venus? I suppose if I would have to focus on anyone, I pro Venus is a young woman. I mean, that's the symbol of a v Venus. So um, if you have young women in your life, uh, you know, whoever they are, um, young women... Um, I don't know how young, uh, they, they, they could be a problem. They could have, um, there could be sort of a lot, a lot of negativity. Uh, you know, it could be anyone, something, a, a young woman you meet by chance, could be a daughter, a relation, a, a partner, whatever. Depends on your, depends on your situation. Um, but uh, young, Venus, Venus hitting a Mars Saturn midpoint um, um, is, um, is, is problematic or you know you could see it as young young women thinking that everything is hopeless that's that, that might be one way of looking at um, Venus on the Mars Saturn midpoint so that might mean that uh, you perhaps need to be sensitive to that so if you come across um, a young woman feeling hopeless um, then ask yourself what you can do to make the situation better maybe you need to talk to them maybe you need to listen something like that maybe uh, you need to provide them some encouragement and tell them, persuade them that things aren't as bad as they seem um, on the surface. Um, OK, so that's the overview of today, Tuesday. Um, I mean, it's not massively dramatic, but I, I probably the most important aspect today is, you know, that moon squaring Mercury Mars. I think it could it could could create a bit of anger. Um, and we have to be aware of it. And we also have to be aware that w we can get angry. Ask, you know, what monitor, monitor yourself as you respond to the world around you. Um, don't just jump to conclusions. Um, if someone really annoys you, maybe it's not actually appropriate to express your annoyance. Maybe you should just um, let the thing pass. OK, that's the um, that's uh, the astrology for today. Um, January the 16th, 2024. And now I want to look at the I Ching. So um, I asked the question, um, what is Tuesday going to be like for those watching this video, or at least 
the segment of this video relating to the I Ching. Um, so I, I, I threw, the, threw three coins six times and uh, the first hexagram I got was hexagram number 53 which is development. So we are in a situation where we're at an early stage of trying to develop something. Uh, what is it? What is it you're trying to develop? I mean, it's up to you. I mean, you think about it. What are you trying to work on? Um, but it does seem we're at an early stage. Um, we, we're at the beginning of, of the task and we're still trying to work out how best to deal with it. And because we're at the beginning, um, we're at our most vulnerable. Um, you know, the symbol here is of um, a young person just starting their journey. And because they're just starting their journey, they don't know the rules and they are a bit vulnerable and they're very prone to making mistakes. And so we do have to be extremely aware of it, uh, of that. And I think it's a situation where you don't, you don't fully know the ropes. And uh, if you go ploughing ahead, um, things could go wrong. So understand your vulnerability and perhaps understand that in terms of the actual thing that you are engaged in right now, you're a bit of a novice. Um, and it's not about your age. It's, it's, about, it's about how you relate to the task at hand. It's just something that you're not entirely familiar with and you need to, need to accept that and respect that to stop your, to, to prevent you um, from making a mistake. Now, this hexagram does move because it's the first line moves from, an un, from a broken to an unbroken line. And this moves to hexagram number 37, which is the family. So if you've got a problem, um, if you feel that you don't really know what you're doing, if you feel you're all at sea, then it seems that the solution would be um, your own family. And by, by family, that's not necessarily um, your family as in blood relatives. It could be your group, your clan, the people you feel comfortable with, your circle of friends, uh, whatever. And they can help you out. So, so if you've got a problem, you feel you're at sea, um, don't assume that you have to sort it out all, all, all on your own. There are people around you who can help. Um, you are not alone. You are a member of a group, whether it's a family, your friends, um, colleagues at work. There are people who are going to gather around and they're going to help you sort the thing out. But you do have to ask. Um, so that's that's potentially a happy ending. Um, but you do have to take the initiative. You do have to make sure that you, you identify the problem and then ask for help. And then I think that help um, will be forthcoming. OK, so what I want to do now is look at the horoscope of um, Gonzalo Lira. Um, so here, uh, let's, uh, top, here is his chart. Top right, that is Gonzalo Lira. Um, I only knew about him with reference to uh, the Ukraine war uh, because he started putting out regular videos, um, and so I I watch him, you know, for, you know, fairly regularly. Uh, but I mean, I don't know about what else he was involved with um, in his previous incarnations as coach, coach Red Pill and all that kind of thing, or as a filmmaker and novelist. I don't really know anything about that. Um, but, you know, he was someone who was very, who seemed to be very sure of himself, perhaps too sure of himself. He, he thought he knew, he seemed to, th I mean, to suggest that he knew all the answers. He knew the way things were going. Um, and, uh, yeah, he seemed to be certainly pretty sure that Russia was in the right and Russia was going to win. He was very clear about that um, in terms of its war with Ukraine. Um, so, uh here is his chart, uh, February, 20, February 29th, 1988, uh, set for Burbank, California. Um, I said I don't, I don't have his time of birth. Um, so you can see uh, straight away that he's certainly got the sun in Pisces. Uh, he may have the moon in Pisces. We don't know um, if he was born before two in the afternoon. 
then the moon would be in Pisces. Otherwise, um, the moon would be the moon would be in Aries. Um, so, you know, with the sun in Pisces, you're dealing with um, a man, I suppose, in his own way, was quite, would be quite sensitive, um, but maybe not always particularly reliable. I mean, he probably soaked up a lot of information. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I mean, he, I, I, lack of reliability, perhaps. But uh, you know, with with Sun on Pisces, he perhaps knew had a feel for what was going on in the world, and um, I suppose if he was into making films and novels, that was all part of the perhaps a Piscean world that he was um, that he was trying to that he was trying to create. Um, he also has. Um, Mars Saturn conjunction in Aries. Um, that is a difficult conjunction. Uh, Mars Saturn in, in Aries. I mean, someone Mars in Aries. He's someone who wants to take the initiative. He wants to be free to do whatever he likes. And Mars conjunct Saturn does represent um, restrictions, uh, things that things that might be holding him back, and it might also. Uh, allude to his death, um, a death which would be well known. So if you've got a Mars-Saturn conjunction, it's possible that you become famous through your own death. Um, and I think that uh, his death, I don't know, how well covered has his death been? I mean, not as well covered as it should have been. Um, I think it's, it's, it's important, but I'm getting the impression that the mainstream media is downplaying his death or perhaps perhaps doing a sort of an ad hominem attack on him just trying to say well you know he wasn't a very nice person maybe he was a shill for putin um he had sort of connections perhaps with the incel movement as his coach red pill focusing on young men who were it had issues with relationships and his questions about going to Ukraine, you know, perhaps why was he in Ukraine? What was he doing in Ukraine? As far as we know, he has, I mean, I think he had had a, had a partner in, in Ukraine, had a child, but, you know, then, you know, there, so there are all sorts of questions that uh, mainstream media are trying to, I think, use to sort of diminish his death, that in some way he he brought about his death. Sure, he was, I would have said, pretty careless. Uh, whatever his reasons for being in Ukraine, um, to go and um, criticize the government and say he supports Russia, well, that's asking for trouble. But then Ukraine could have just deported him. Um, but Mars Saturn, I think, is about his his death, and I think perhaps his premonition of death. I think he must have known he knew that if he didn't leave Ukraine, Ukraine, that's why he jumped bail. Because if he didn't jump bail, he thought he was going to die. But I suppose that kind of became a self fulfilling prophecy with that with that Mars Saturn um, conjunction. Um, you notice also that he's got Mercury Venus conjunction in Aquarius. Okay, it's a it's somewhat wide that Mercury Venus conjunction, but you know Mercury Venus conjunctions are about talent, artistic talent and creativity. Um, clearly, he was a talented and creative person. And notice how he's got his Venus sextile Mars. Um, I mean, I suppose. He was charismatic. Um, he was coach Red Pill. He put a lot. He put a lot of effort into, um, I suppose, counselling um, young young men about uh, their perhaps their sexual frustrations and not being able to uh, to find girlfriends or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I don't really know much about his life as coach Red Pill, but Venus sextile Mars would suggest he certainly had charisma. And you will notice that the Sun is on his Venus-Mars midpoint. So with the Sun on the Venus-Mars midpoint, I suppose sexuality and relationships became a, a very important part um, of um, who he was and how he, tried to, how he tried to express himself. And yeah, this whole concept of um, coach, coach Red Pill um, in his previous incarnation before he got involved, involved in, in um, 
Ukraine. Notice how he does not have any planets in Earth signs except for um, Uranus and Pluto. Uranus and Pluto, generational planets. So the fact that they're in Earth signs is pretty irrelevant and a whole generation of people will have um, Uranus and Pluto in in Earth signs. No, no traditional planets in Earth signs. Maybe he wasn't properly grounded. Maybe if he'd been more grounded, he wouldn't have... Um, ignored his health. I mean, he was he was a chain smoker. You, I mean, at least in terms of how he uh, how he did his videos in Ukraine, you know, he would he'd be smoking throughout his videos. Um, uh, and perhaps he didn't have a, a, a good sense of what was good for him on a physical sense and in a physical way. And clearly staying in Ukraine while he's criticizing a government and supporting the Russians, that suggests a certain lack of earth. Um, so I suppose his critics would say, well, he brought it on himself. But that's not, that's no reason for what the Ukrainians did. I, I mean, as I said, he, he was at their mercy. He, they could have deported him, but they, I looks as if they just felt we, they just, we can do it. We just want him to die. <laughs> that seems to be the case. Um, so those are, you know, those are a few points um, about his about his horoscope. Now, what about um, what about his death? How, how do we go about looking at his death? Um, well, I did uh, I did look at his solar arc directions um, um, for his um, death. So the solar so in terms of the solar arc directions, um, there is. Um, some interesting stuff going on. I also did his solar return. So this was his solar return. Um, his solar return um, for his birthday, his last birthday, uh, his final birthday on the planet. Solar return. This is set for February 28, 2023. Again, I don't have a time of birth. Uh, so if you've got a solar return, uh, so that there's no ascendant here, um, but this, this is when the sun returned to where it, wa where it was at birth and, and his last birthday. You can see the sun, there's the sun at zero degrees Pisces, sorry, 10 degrees Pisces. And you can see that the sun is making a square to Mars, a very wide square to Mars. And you can see that the sun is about nine degrees off the square to Mars. Now, when you're doing a solar return and you see nine degrees off the square to Mars, you might say, well, nine degrees is nine months, perhaps, because you use, and astrologers use this kind of symbolic measure. So maybe nine months time, he could be in real trouble. So if you count that off, uh, so February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So I would have said, you know, Roughly November, you'd think that he'd be in real trouble. In fact, he died in died in January. I I think a few months he he'd already been rearrested with his attempt his, with his breaking of bail. So that wide Sun square Saturn Sun square Mars um, might give us some clue um, about what what actually happened to him. Um, then um, yeah, there is his there are his solar his solar arc directions. Um, so solar arc directions. Um, so you will see here this chart is a is a complete mess, and that's because I've actually put in um, the hypothetical planets. Um, I, I will um, I'll explain that in a moment. Um, so in terms of his in terms of his solar arc directions. Um, we we need to look at uh the aries point so the aries so the aries point um in in any chart is important what's at 0 degrees aries and what is aspecting 0 degrees aries um in other words an, an aspect by conjunction opposition square semi square or sesqui quadrate so does does um does Gonzalo Lira have anything um, aspecting the Aries point? Answer is yes. Uh, Hades, the hypothetical planet Hades. Um, Hades represents um, death, garbage, criminality, 
the underside of life. And he was born with Hades square, H- Hades semi-square, the Aries point. Now, anyone born at the beginning of 1968 would have had Hades um, square, the Aries point. Um, so that in itself um, is not a big deal. Um, s- but still, we need to, to remember that. Then we think, OK, the Aries point uh, can be directed. So he was he was 55 years old when he died. So um, we would di- we can direct the air. What, what happens if we direct the Aries point by 55 degrees? Where does it go to? So if you count that off, 30 degrees takes us to zero degrees Taurus. Um, 60 degrees would take us to zero degrees um, Gemini. So 55 degrees is about 25 degrees Taurus, uh, which is, of course, actually the fixed star Caput Algol um, is at around 25, 26 Taurus. But uh, that's that's something something that's that's an extra detail. So. So this this Aries, this uh, this um so if you so if you so if you look at his um if you look at uh the aries point so there's the aries point and we mo- and so we would move this so we would move the aries point to 25 degrees taurus um and you can see that at 25 degrees taurus it is exactly semi square his mars saturn um midpoint so uh so he had the aries with the directed aries point on his mars saturn midpoint now hades if we direct hades by by 55 degrees that takes us through that takes us to 15 uh 15 cancer that takes us to 10 that takes us to 10 cancer there you are there's directed hades so when he died solar arc directed hades was at 10 38 cancer so you can see that hades was exactly square his mars saturn midpoint so he had that aries point the aries point was 45 degrees away from hades and when it was when they were directed 55 degrees he had hades hitting his aries hades hitting his mars saturn midpoint and he had the aries point hitting his mars his mars saturn midpoint so he i think he personally experienced his hades on the um aries point actually i'm afraid through his death hades on the aries point you know the aries point is about the world at large and how ghastly it is it's 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 criminality it's unpleasantness he he was part of it he knew what the world was really like he was part of that whole generation born in the early 1960s who could see it and it became personal it became personal when that hades aries point was directed to his mars saturn midpoint and those are the conditions um in which he died and i think I think that's how I would see his death. That is, I think, the thing that killed him, um, given that I don't have his time of birth. It was it was Hades. Uh, Hades on the Aries point, directed to his Mars-Saturn con- conjunction. And yeah, that's, um, um, that's, that's it. That's his, um, that's his death. Um, let me just see what... Um, um, Alfred Witter, Witter, in his Rules for Planetary Pictures, what he says about Hades on the Mars-Saturn midpoint. Uh, Hades on the Mars-Saturn midpoint, he says, this is quite good, actually. I mean, not good, but he says, sickness through overexertion or privation, death through severe sickness or privation, unusual death. And that pretty much sums it up. I think that is um, pretty much what happened. And if you look at Aries on the Mars-Saturn midpoint, Vitter and his colleagues, they say um, sickness, separation, death. 
And so that's what happened. And I think um, Hades hitting his Mars Saturn midpoint really do, did, does describe um, how he died. Um, if I had a time of birth, one could perhaps look at other indicators that he was in real danger. But uh, yeah, I suppose that sums it up. Anyway, um, I did feel I had to cover um, Gonzalo Lira because um, I thought the manner of his death was appalling, regardless of what kind of person he was, regardless of the way he expressed himself, regardless of what he was doing in Ukraine and before he was he went to Ukraine. Um, and um, a lot of the blame must fall on the American government for not for not. Um, for not providing consular assistance to an American citizen, which it should have done. Um, and of course, the Ukrainian government and, or whoever was responsible for looking after him, which as far as I can see, they basically um, took the view that they wanted to kill him. As far as I can see, maybe that's wrong. But he was he was basically killed at the very least um, through neglect. And I think, again, privation. That's Hades hitting his Mars Saturn midpoint. OK, thank you uh, very much for um, listening. Um, sorry to have a somewhat bleak video, but um, I, I, you know, I, I think we perhaps need to um, need to know about Gonzalo Lira because I think not enough people know about it and um, know actually what happened to him and how he was treated. Um, so yeah, so uh, thank you for listening. Um, if you enjoyed this video or found the video useful, then of course I'd be grateful if you liked it. Um, if you're not if you're not a subscribed, then again I'd be grateful if you subscribed. And if you want to buy me a coffee, uh, there is um, a link in the description. Thanks again for listening, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.